Hello and welcome to our next video in the Climate Scenario Analysis Series. My name is Jordan and I'm a Sustainable Investment Consultant at Barnett Wadenham, working within our Sustainable Investment Team. Now, in this video, we will be covering our approach to climate scenario modelling. That is assessing the impact on an investor's assets across different climate scenarios and different time periods. Now, this video is part of a series of videos covering our climate scenario analysis framework. And if you haven't already, then I'd encourage you to check out our other videos within the series. So, climate scenario analysis is one of the three pillars that makes up Barnett Wadenham's climate analysis framework. It provides a simple and intuitive illustration of how an investment may perform under predefined climate scenarios over a short, medium, and long term time horizon allowing an investor to consider the climate risks they're exposed to over what time horizon. When creating scenarios, we're not trying to predict the future, as helpful as that might be. Instead, our framework aims to provide investors with an illustration or narrative, helping them understand the risks of climate change across their investments and the different scenarios and across different time periods. Our framework centers around four scenarios. That is an early action scenario, a late action scenario, a no additional action scenario, and a far too little, too late scenario. Now, to create these scenarios, our climate scenario analysis makes use of a combination of climate data provided by the Bank of England, coupled with our own in-house proprietary research. Now, the choice to use the Bank of England data to base our framework around was driven by the fact that, unlike many other climate scenario models, this is publicly available data. Furthermore, its underlying assumptions and underlying methodology are also publicly available. Now, each scenario has its own unique characteristics and different exposures to both transition and physical risks. Furthermore, they have different assumptions and have a large number of climate metrics underlying them. For each scenario, we've highlighted two of what we see as the key metrics, that is the carbon price and global temperatures. We believe that these would be the key drivers of transition risk and physical risk, respectively. An early action scenario assumes that to achieve a successful transition to a low carbon economy, early action is taken by policymakers. This results in a smooth transition that exhibits a moderate level of transitional risk, but a limited level of physical risk. Carbon pricing is expected to rise to around $900 per tonne of carbon, but global temperatures are limited to 1.6 degrees by the end of the century. A late action scenario achieves the same temperature limiting results as an early action scenario. However, action by policymakers is delayed or late, resulting in a disruptive transition, higher carbon pricing, and therefore higher transitional risk. A no additional action scenario assumes that no additional action is taken by policymakers. This results in low transition risk and a low carbon price, but significant temperature rises by the end of the century and therefore higher physical risks. And finally, a far too little too late scenario combines a late action and a no additional action scenario and assumes that due to action being delayed or late by policymakers, including of course a higher global carbon price, policy is futile and therefore significant temperature rises still occur by the end of the century, resulting in a high level of both transition and physical risk. Our climate scenario analysis assesses the impact of a late action, no additional action and a far too little too late scenario by projecting forward how investments may fare under each relative to an early action scenario as illustrated on the left hand side graph on this slide. The difference or scenario impact as illustrated by the blue shaded area on the right hand side graph is used to calculate the scenario impact that feeds into our climate scenario analysis. Now this is done for each of the scenarios across a 30 year time horizon. In fact, impacts are measured across a short term, that is less than 10 years, medium term, that is 10 to 20 years, and a long term time horizon, the latter being over 20 years, considering the largest impact under each time period for a given scenario. Scenario impacts are then scored on a scale from 0 to 9, with 0 being a negligible impact and 9 being a severe impact. The 
The output of climate scenario analysis is a simple three by three scoring matrix that quantifies the impact of an investment's return across various scenarios and various time periods. This allows investors to pinpoint exactly where and when the investment strategy may be most exposed to the largest threat of climate change. Analysis can be carried out at an investment or fund level, allowing investors to pinpoint which assets are contributing most to their climate risks, but can also be aggregated up to a strategy or portfolio level, allowing investors a broader insight into their climate risks. This flexibility allows for a deeper, more detailed and more portfolio specific analysis of your climate risks. Furthermore, it is the impact experience under a far too little too late scenario over the longer term, that is the bottom right number in this matrix, that directly feeds into an asset climate risk impact score, providing a direct link between the two pillars of the framework. The climate risk impact score, or CRI score, is discussed in more detail in a separate video within our climate analysis series. Now, if you would like more information on how you can integrate these climate analysis tools into your portfolio, then please contact your usual partner at Wadnam Point of Contact. Also, please look out for our other climate analysis framework videos within the series. Thank you for watching.